In the previous episode, I was taking the start of the mini transit. With 89 other boats, we left from Les Sables d'Olonne, and after only 48 hours of racing, we already had passed through one ridge and one front, with wind up to 40 knots, and we are approaching Cap Finisterre. Here is the rest of the light one. Well, there was only one choice really, but code 5. Um, it's pretty intense, there is between 22 and 25 knots of wind. Uh, that's not so much of a problem. The issue is the sea state which is uh, relatively big and also kind of on the beam ridge so kind of a rodeo so in the previous episode i was explaining how a passing front was affecting the wind direction now imagine that before the front passes the wind has been blowing quite strong for a while and has created a big sea state but now the wind veers and you are not upwind anymore, you are on a broad ridge. But the direction of the waves takes time to adjust. So you are now going kind of downwind, much faster, but facing the waves. That's the perfect cocktail to break your boat. Let's see how long I manage to keep this. The wind should be easing, so that's fine. I'll see it later today when the wind eases. But at the moment it's going to be fine. A few moments later. All right, so the code five ended up being too much power. I'm not going in the right direction. And now in the small Janneker, it's much better. There is Loic over there. Big surfing time. Alright, so it's not fun if a few things don't happen, right? Uh, my wind vane at the top of the mast stopped working. I mean, the, the wind vane works, the anemometer stopped working. I went up there, tried to put WD-40, but it's only spinning if there is more than 10 knots of wind. So, uh, plan B, I have a spare one, I'm going to install it on the carbon tube at the back of the boat. Let's see how I do this as fast as possible. Trying to stay in the game at the same time with the boat over there. Trying not to let him pass me. And because if it's too easy, it's not funny. Uh, for some reason, I can't find the cable to connect uh, the new wind vane to the system so box and so I have to unwire all the LED lights from the boat get the cable and uh, and make them work somehow let's go Right, so here I have all the cables uh, I could find around the boat, not useful for anything uh, navigation related. So let's connect them together and put this uh, rig up in place. Alright, so I dropped the spinnaker so I could disconnect the whole system, make sure that the wind vane is working and it is now let's do the hard uh, hardware stuff, put the uh, tube in place and rig the whole thing so it works. Let's try to do this efficiently. Thank you. 
All right, that's it. Wind vane up there, mounted with gray tape. It's not super straight, but I hope it will do the work. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. Now let's just try to connect the wind vane mode and see if it works. Picking. Might need a little bit of calibration, but pretty nice. All right, now let's go back to racing. Now I've just lost about one mile on the guy who was a bit behind me. So it's not too bad. All right, racey, racey, let's go. Right, just had a little bit of food. I'll go for a steering session. And yeah, just enjoy the night. That won't be a big fight against weather. I mean, it's like light wind, but at least not completely soaking wet. That's the scene. Oh, so difficult. I just spent all night stuck in a wind hole right there and spent most of the night getting out of that. And I'm not out yet. So annoying. I don't know, I was like with a group driver at the same time as them, they passed, I got stuck and they sailed away at like four knots and I stayed stuck. No idea what's happening. I mean I know what's happening. I went too close to the to the cape trying to get you know on the border of the pressure. But that might be a really really costly mistake. <sighs> Anyway, c'est la vie. The only good uh, side of this is that there's only one point of sail. The boat moved a little, so once the, the boat was onto that course, uh, I've been able to sleep a little bit and catch up on, on sleep, which wasn't the case yesterday with all the, all the fixing. I have been doing around the boat, but yeah, it's gonna be. If the wind catches up soon, as well, it's gonna be a long day. We'll see. So annoyed. Finally moving a little, not amazing, but at least moving. Here is Cap Finistère, I mean, the one over there. I'm taking the advantage to charge the batteries as much as I can. They have all solar panels out. As long as it's dolphins and not orcas playing with the rudders, I'm happy. Belly flop. Don't 
All right, so still moving, sort of, and it's uh, almost 1500. So see, 1500 is weather forecast time, so I'm going to install everything. So first, I have the BLU, the radio. Then I have this cable that I use for um, as antenna. I just, I just clip it onto uh, this bolt here. So I have, uh, so it's connected to the shroud outside. So I connect the antenna to the BLU. Then I connect a recorder to the radio. And then I connect the earplugs to the recorder. So I record and listen at the same time. And if I miss anything or if I have to go out and maneuver, I still have everything recorded just in case. Because this is my only way to get weather forecast. And also I have here. So this is my chart table. Just set it up wherever and I have so I have a format where I write down the um, the forecast and I have a chart where I plot uh, whatever forecast is given to me. So there is different zones with like squares and they give the wind strength in that zone for two days in advance. And then uh, the high pressure centers, the low pressure centers, and I do my uh, weather forecast based on that. And the wind is dying, so I need to go figure out before it starts. Two minutes. So that's it, I've got all the information onto um, this sheet and now it's based on doing kind of the strategy with the weather charts, um, but it's not looking good for me for what I heard. All right, let's check out how the boat's going and then do this. You know what you get on a boat in the morning? Morning dolphins. All right, so I'm really rushing to uh, get these uh, episodes ready because tomorrow, no, the day after tomorrow, I'm leaving um, from Guadeloupe to friends. I'm bringing back a class 40 that looks like this. And so I'm trying to get these episodes out at the same time. It's a bit of a rush, but so I'll, I'll cut it there. I'll do more episodes about the trends at uh, really soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to uh, cross the Atlantic back. So I think uh, we should have a tracker for this uh, crossing back. I'll put the link um, in the description below when you see this episode will probably somewhere um, in the middle uh, of the Atlantic. In winter, so it's gonna be a tough crossing. I'll try to put some stuff on Instagram, which should have a satellite connection. So, yeah, pretty much it. Stay posted and fair winds, and probably Merry Christmas and Happy New Year around that time. Bye bye.